Hey, what's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So you're probably wondering why I'm sitting here in a half cut yard. We'll get to that a little later on in the video. But before we get to that, I wanted to go ahead and fulfill a quick request and also give you the timestamps for this entire video because there's a lot going on today. Hey Cletus, if you want the best infield ever, please call me. Seems like I find these all around the yard for months. I almost forgot, if you haven't seen the videos I put out last week, I did a really comprehensive spring getting started list of videos and I had breakouts for each grass type. I'm gonna link those in the description below because there's a lot of really good information there for Bermuda zoysia, centipede St. Augustine, Kentucky bluegrass, turf type tall fescue, and of course, perennial rye. So make sure you check out those videos. There's a lot of really good tips in there to get you started right in the spring. Okay, so you folks with Bahia, I know I owe you some content. So I've actually come out here to the largest Bahia field that I know, Bahia 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 Bahoa. The largest one that I know, it's here at my church over here in East Bradenton. Now the reason I came out here is because this is what I mainly know Bahia to be used for, fields where people park on the field or roadsides, things like that. You can actually see these brown spots in here. These are from car exhaust when people park here, burn spots in it. But either way, that's typically what Bahia is known as, and that's why you just don't see a lot of content about it. It's really rare, actually. The only places I've seen it, well, it's very, very highly concentrated over in St. Pete, where I grew up, and maybe a few other coastal areas along the Gulf Coast. But other than that, I just don't know that many places where Bahia is actually grown. And I have to be careful laying down in this field too much. There's a lot of fire ant mounds in here, but there's one thing about a Bahia field, and you'll know it if you've been on one, there's a certain smell to Bahia grass. Anybody that's played baseball where there's Bahia grass outfields, which was pretty much all the ones I played on in St. Pete as a kid, there's a certain smell to it. Even the schools I went to, we had Bahia grass in the fields, in the practice fields and stuff like that. And I don't know, there's something to it. You guys comment below if you know what I'm talking about, but either way, it kind of goes back to what this grass is good for. How can we then take what this grass is used for, which is areas of neglect, areas that uh, are highly trafficked, areas that are probably not highly manicured. You know, it's kind of one of those grasses that can live on its own, neglected even, and do really, really well. So because it has that loner nature, it doesn't really need a lot from us. Now, on the flip side of that, it isn't gonna look as beautiful, as manicured as a turf grass either. I'm kind of rambling here, but what I'm getting at is... All right, so I drew this up real quick because I think this is just the best way to describe it. Bahia grass likes to grow in fields alone, left alone. It'll do just fine. It'll subsist, so I call it the loner. It'll thrive alone with only the sun and the rain. Remember, we get here in coastal areas where you mostly find it, you get a lot of free nitrogen from lightning. And, and that's why I've often said, hey, you ever notice how grass on the side of the road is green after a lightning storm? A lot of that is Bahia grass. It'll live in the worst sandy soils where others will fail. There's one reason it can do that, and that's because it has really deep root system. It also has these giant claws, we call them stolons, but they look like these claws and it just claws in. It will also tolerate shade better than almost every other warm season turf when it's forced to. It mostly just needs micros as supplementation because it gets so much in from natural rain. The only time you really need to give it as a cool little dose of in is maybe in the spring when we're not getting as many lightning storms. So this is what Bahia grass looks like. These are the seed heads and this is why you have to mow it so often to keep these tamed and keep these at bay. So not only does mowing keep the seed heads down, but it also encourages the two strengths that we're looking to encourage. Frequent mowing, less visible seed heads, more root production, we're gonna go ahead and accentuate the positives. It likes to be alone with deep roots. The more you mow it, it's gonna push more roots and less seed heads, and then more stolen production. It reminds me of Kentucky bluegrass in this manner that the stolons are there, they're not super aggressive wide, but 
frequent mowing will encourage these to fatten up. If you don't do the frequent mowing, Bahia grass will actually stay fairly thin in just small stalks with those deep roots, but the more mowing you do, the more it's gonna press out these fat stolons. All of that together with that frequent mowing, less water is gonna be needed and a thicker, softer top growth. Mow it frequently to tame it, to push those roots and push those stolons. As far as pre-emergence go, you can use the same prodiamine and or dithiapyr that everyone else uses and follow the same plan based on soil temps. I like to see Bahia mowed at three inches or higher. Slow release nitrogen at three quarter pounds per thousand in spring is a good idea, but if you can go less, I recommend you do. Stay heavy on the micros, the humic acid, and the sea kelp all year long. The Biostimulant Pack is a perfect companion for any Bahia lawn. I also encourage you to consider going all liquid even with your nitrogen and potassium vert because a lot of you live in coastal areas and liquids get into the soil much quicker and have less chance of washing away into storm drains. There's a fire ant mound. Gonna have to get out here and take care of that. Don't do this at home kids. Gotta run. They'll be on me in seconds. If you're looking for a good weed control, you can use the same image for southern lawns that I recommend for all warm season turf. This will work great. Maybe a little bit of damage to your Bahia. Just make sure it's under 85 degrees when you apply it. This is the ready to spray version right here. So you can just hose this down because Bahia is susceptible to weeds because it does tend to be a little thin coming out of the winter. So pick this up. It's cheap and it works great. No way. It's got to be too early. These are called love bugs, and nobody loves them. Yeah, broke up that marriage. You know how they say that black cars show all the dirt? Well, it's the same for black lawnmowers. Just requires a little more commitment, that's all. No worries. Bahia grass.
So I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this mo, and hopefully you got. So I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this mo. So I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish and enjoy this mo, and hopefully you guys will get into the flow. So I'm gonna go ahead and enjoy this. So I'm gonna go ahead and. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish and enjoy this mo, and hopefully you guys will get into the flow. Bro. Show. Crow. Yo. Bill Bib the boat. May as well get a quick look at it. I wouldn't say we're overgrown here, but yeah, no, we're, we're following the one-third rule. You know, give or take a couple two tree centimeters over by there. This is the uh, Bermuda and St. Augustine mix. They are both super dark, dark blue-green right now. That's why you can see that domination so hard over there. Look at that, huh? That is a nice razor cut. You see that? I don't know if this camera is going to pick it up, so I'll uh, look at how nice that cut is. You see that? Whoever sharpened that blade did a good job. Yeah, this is. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hold out for final review when uh, I get some more experience with the machine. I just like to kind of talk you through different segments as I go, but real happy so far. Not with the way it looks, though. This, though, is uglified. That's the, <laughs> this is the mulch kit. It's, uh, you're supposed to leave the, here. Dang, that looks pretty. Look at that St. Aug, oh. Woo! See, so you're, I, I assume, my assumption is they just think you're gonna leave that on there, right, so that it covers that up, but I mean, I need this extra couple two tree inches here for storage in my garage. So I had to take it off. And see, I actually gained storage space by doing that. Cause I was having to, I was having to, I was having to bungee this up like this. And anyway, so, oh, I mean, such a beautiful machine to be. Oh, oh, anyway, I need to get back and enjoy this mo because it's such a beautiful day today. I told you guys, I want to bring you sunshine. All you guys up north, you're going to have this real soon. Don't worry. You'll be able to get this domination going too. How you doing? Good, how you doing? Good. Just shooting YouTube videos, don't worry. <laughs> okay. No lawnmowers being harmed here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Is that how I'm supposed to do it? <laughs> I know I said I was gonna reserve judgment, but overall cut quality actually seems to be better with the mulch kit on than it was with the side discharge. And that would make sense because of the wedges. So listen, the biggest thing that I get is every time I bring this out is people people will say, I thought you preferred to walk. I thought you never said you'd ride. I don't know if I ever said never, but I definitely said I definitely preferred to walk. And one thing that the people that asked me that question have forgotten is the name of this channel. You see, because I'm the lawn care nut, not only do I prefer to walk, I also prefer to ride, both in the same day.